Hello everybody, my name is Igor Posovets from 3DIO and I was reviewing in the last week some works of our customers and I have noticed that many of them are uh, not using Flatiron only for the main productions, computer games, uh, assets and so on, but also for the instant publishing to the web viewers, online configurators and other 3D apps. So I thought, let me demonstrate the full power of Flatiron by creating a realistic shady scenario with a light rig and uh, GI and shadows and everything with a lot of objects and bake it for a sketchfab uh, with only a few clicks in a minute or two. So before we start, I would like to show you the final result, final look what we want to have in uh, Sketchfab. For this purpose, I've created a simple light trick. You have here uh, a bunch of lamps on the walls, under the work desk, and there is a sun outside and the ambient light. And once I render this image, you can see how it should appear later as the baked texture. I have used Arnold uh, Denoiser on the top of uh, the render process so I can achieve this uh, smooth look and, and soft shadows. And uh, if you would like how to set up the Arnold Denoiser, this is very simple. I will go to the render settings. I have for this purpose used the defaults. I didn't change anything and I have added here below to the images Denoiser Oidin. If you understand much better than me how the denoiser works, you can use something else, but this was actually perfect for my purposes. So this is the result and we want the exact same result as the bake texture. So let us start. What we see here is the scene consisting of 107 objects. If I would try to unwrap and pack them manually in one map and then render to texture each of them and combine them in Photoshop and so on, it could take a lot of time. Uh, just for this reason we have created Flatiron. It allows me to unwrap and pack all selected objects in one UV map and render it in one bitmap. So we will do it now with just few clicks. Uh, I have selected all the objects in the scene. I will go to the utilities where I have installed Flatiron. I will choose the unwrapping uh, method. This is in this case hard surface because the most of our objects are edgy, uh, average, stru average stru structure. Uh, I will use uh, target channel to park this unwrapped texture. Uh, I must be careful not to overwrite the UV channel one because it consists, the scene consists already of a lot of uh, bitmap textures uh, using the UV space, uh, UV channel one and uh, I will choose the texture size. For this case, I think 2048 is uh, more than enough for the quality. Then I will give it a name for this entity group. And uh, because this is a non-scripted tutorial, I will click around and talk and work simultaneously and maybe make mistakes, which is actually very good because we are learning much more from mistakes than from this uh, uh, scripted rapid fire tutorials. So in this case, I will leave it as it is. The default settings, the packing is efficient and all charts will be rotated 90 degrees until they find the perfect position and, and I will press unwrap. So after a second, you will see how all objects are packed into the target channel 4 and it looks like, like this. So I'm not so happy with these orientations here because they are probably uh, in the world space oriented 45 degrees. So maybe, maybe it would be good to try to use 45 degrees rotation steps and maybe use high quality behold because we have a lot of small parts. And if I press unwrap again, it will take uh, two or three seconds longer, but the result is much more coherent as you can see here. So one thing here is interesting, and this is the uniformly scaled UV charts on the map. So each object here represents actually in its correct scale, the UV scale of the chart in the UV map. This means that I have two walls in the background. These are these two objects you can see here and the ground I will never see later in Sketchfab. And they are covering, as you can see here, they are covering a lot of UV space. So what would be the best method to unwrap them without using a lot of UV space? For this reason, you can scroll down. We have a extensive documentation. If you press on the help button, you can see the help documentations of Flatiron. And here is uh, object scaling. So we can use a method of priority to define how big are some UV charts uh, in, the, in the final UV map. And this is done with the command flat iron scale. So we'll do it right now. I have already created a selection set. So you can see them. These are these three objects, two objects. I will press right mouse button, object properties. 
and then write in user defined tab flat iron scale with a big S and then the ratio. The ratio 1 means it is as we have it now, it's 1 to 1. And if I write 0 0.1, they will be scaled to one tenth of their size, which is actually okay. So be careful here. In some cases, you have to use comma, and in some, ca some cases, you have to use dot. Uh, this is depending on your window settings. I have here a German uh, keyboard and German language settings, so it doesn't work with dot, it works with comma. If you are in the US or whatever, uh, maybe the dot is uh, the correct one. Also, the dot won't work in my case. Uh, I have to use comma. This is a window setting. So let us go back and let us unwrap it again. Now, not these guys, everything. Unwrapping, unwrapping, unwrapping. And now you will see a complete different unwrap. So they are now very small hidden somewhere. So I, I have to search them. These are those two walls. Let me see, let me see where they can be. They're probably somewhere, somewhere here. They were rescaled to one tenth of their size. So in the next step, we will choose the bake element. This means what do we want to bake as a final output? And for this purpose, we will take, because I'm using Arnold, I will choose Arnold RGBA. This will allow me to bake both lights and shades and GI solution, everything in one map. So you can also add a lot of other, depending on your renderer, a lot of other render elements, for example, normal maps and albedo or airborne occlusion. But for this purpose, we are going to Sketchweb. I just need RGBA. For the final result, we will use standard material because this is the most compatible with FBX and OBJ experts. And uh, in this standard material, the final texture, render texture, this RGBA PNG, should be automatically pasted into the diffuse color. So we don't need to do it manually. So once this is static, I will toggle self illumination uh, material property so that the texture is not affected by the light once it is rendered and uh, overwrite it because we don't need this, in this case, shell materials. Finally, we can press the bake group, which means the render process will start rendering the texture and here is how it looks like. So you can see 3D Max renders now with Arnold all 107 objects and uh, all those 100 UV charts uh, using denoising method. At the moment you won't see anything because this is the way how Arnold probably works. It renders in the background the shaders and once one pass is completed, uh, Arnold will denoise it and then uh, um, expose it on the screen. So let us wait. I will return in a minute. Now Arnold is finishing the render process. It's, I think, in this moment over and it writes the PNG file to hard drive, takes this PNG file and create a new standard material. Bang, here it is. So this is the scene. So let me just hide these light blockers I have created here. So we don't need them anymore. So this is the render scene. Uh, it consists of uh, one texture map. Let us take a look at the anatomy of this file. We have 107 objects, they are all still here. And we have one material applied to all of them. And if you take a look at the image, at the texture, so this is the texture, you can recognize the objects. Here is the carpet and here is the guitar and so on and so on. And we have at uh, the end, self illuminating material, so it's not affected by light anymore. I will select all the lights and uh, let me delete them all for a second so I don't need the lights anymore. So we have now self illuminated scene. We can drag and drop in Sketchfab and it looks actually should look identically to the rendered image. We have rendered at the beginning, so this is the render image and this here is texture baked image. So this one took a minute to render or two and this here is real time. So see now the advantage. Okay, this tutorial was very long because I was explaining every click and every button. Once you know what you have to do, you select the unroll parameter, you park everything in a UV channel that you are not using, you define the texture of it, you unroll everything in one UV map, 
choose the bake element and bake the group. That's actually everything. You don't need to do anything more. So let us do a few optimizations. The map was rendered in UV channel 4. So we have UV channel 4 here. Depending on your render engine, it won't work. In Unreal, you have, I think, four UV channels in Unity 2 or 3, whatever. Uh, the best thing for Sketchfab is always to put all UVs in a channel 1. And for this purpose, we have created a small uh, Mac script. It's called UV Copy. You can find it in the description below. And I will select all objects in the scene copy from 4, so this is the channel where our UV are defined, and copy them to the UV channel 1. Copy, so it's done. You have seen it is automatically changed here. And now all our objects have the texture in the UV channel 1. The last thing we can do for the optimization to avoid the overhead, because we have 107 objects, it is unnecessary for a static uh, object viewer like, like Sketchfab. We do not have interaction, they are not animated and they are not moving. So we can select them all because they are using one texture. We can go to collapse and collapse everything in one mesh. So we have now one mesh and one texture. We can go to export and then export everything as ESO room FBX save export and load it with drag and drop in Sketchfab. And this is what we get in the Sketchfab. You just need to import the FBX and uh, in the shaders, in the materials, you have to load this one texture map we have created in the base color and uh, once again, probably in uh, emission. If I turn the emission off, you see the default Sketchfab lightning. If I turn it on, it uses the emission from our own texture. And that's actually everything. Now you can publish this and enjoy in Sketchfab you are. If you have any questions or need more info, please contact us anytime. Thank you for your attention. See you later. Bye bye.